Okay, this brings us to question 29, and this says uh, for a bake sale, uh, Marianne has baked P chocolate chip cookies, and Jeffrey has baked Q peanut butter cookies. They want to package their cookies separately so that each bag has the same number of cookies. How many cookies could they put in each bag? All right, this is a simple factoring question. Notice that you have A as uh, finding the divisors of P and Q, uh, finding common factors, finding the prime factors, and finding the common multiples of, uh, of P and Q. It's a, it's a factoring question. Let me try to illustrate that to you. Let's say that one child or one person did eight cookies, and it doesn't matter which one was which, and the other one was a little bit more ambitious and did, and did 48, and you want to find out how you get even numbers of uh, packages out of this. Well, just factor them, because you've got, for example, two cookies in one, two in another, and two in another. That's going to give you two times two times two, which gives you eight. 48 is going to factor thusly. It will factor into six times eight is 48, continue to factor two times three, and then eight over here will have two times two times two. So we know then that we, we could have three bags of uh, peanut butter cookies, let's say, and three bags of chocolate chip cookies in order to have our even number of uh, cookies per bag. And so that is going to then be answer uh, B. And that's really the only way that you're going to get something like that. Finding divisors of P and Q, uh, prime factors, one step in it, that's true. But finding the common factors is what's going to give you the um, the uh, separate bags of, of cookies. So C looks like it could be correct. It is a step in the problem, but it is not the final step. Uh, common multiples, well, you know, it's, it's what we just did, but it's really the common factors that will determine uh, the number of bags for the separate cookies. So hopefully that made, uh, made sense to you. Let's take a look at 30 now, if we could. This is simple scientific notation. You just have to learn which way to run the decimal. So let me read this out to you. See if I can't bump it up a little bit so you can see that negative symbol in there. That's the important one, kids. Sorry, uh, that's the important ones, my friends. This is uh, what value, this is place value, does the number 2 represent in the number 2.1 times 10 to the negative third? Well, this is really easy. To do scientific notation, just write down 2.1. Pay attention to the negative symbol. When they give you 2.1 times 10 to the negative third. What they're really asking you to do is run the decimal in this direction. So let's take a look at which way we're going to move it. So if it's times 10 to the negative third, I know I've got to move it to the left. So this is 1, 2, 3. Put our decimal here, and we're really looking at point zero zero two. Well, remember, what we're trying to determine is place value. So not the number one in this case, but the number two. Where is that placed? Well, remember that after the decimal, this is the tenths uh, place, this is the one hundredths place, and then right down here, that's the one thousandths place. The only answer then that could be two over one thousand is B. That's it. And that's why that one is correct. So for scientific notation, if it's negative, run it to the left. If it's positive, simply run it to the right. Okay, hopefully that uh, made sense, and so did the previous one. If not, send me an email and tell me what to fix. Okay, thanks, and I'll be back.